Okay, welcome to the first uh, tutorial session uh, for this Q2 hackathon. Um, my name is Ray. Um, I'm the, the community manager at GitLab and just going to cover a topic. Uh, it's titled Contributing to GitLab. And uh, to be honest, this is probably something that I sh probably should have done at previous hackathons. Uh, we have a lot of uh, new contributors that's joining uh, the ranks uh, for each release and at each hackathon. So I just wanted to have a quick overview of where and how you can contribute, where you can find resources to get you started, um, and and also 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 how you can get help as you're started uh, started your journey in, in contributing to GitLab. Uh, so, sorry, if, uh, some, yep. sorry, let me yeah, mute that other line there. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely want to make this casual. And my manager, Dave uh, Planella, is also on the line. Uh, he'll chime in as well. Uh, and uh, I want to make this uh, interactive. We have uh, several people online. So feel free to interrupt us with questions, either verbally or uh, feel free to uh, uh, type them in the Zoom window. Um, so uh, as for agenda, uh, I think I mentioned a couple of areas already on where you can contribute and how to get started. I uh, also want to share some I mean, community metrics, the common questions uh, that I get uh, frequently is um, <clears throat> how, how um, many people and how much contribution that, that we get at GitLab from from the wider community. Um, uh, as I mentioned, I mean, don't wait until the Q and A section at the end. If you have any questions, I mean, feel free to interrupt us. Um, Ray, yeah, quick, yeah quick, go ahead. Uh, just a quick note: uh, you might want to share the share, uh, um, switch the presentation to uh, the slides to presentation mode. It's better yeah, for uh, yeah. Let me start off that way. I'll be jumping back and forth on different uh, panels, so I might have to uh, go back to the regular mode, but yeah, let's cool. get started yeah. with the full screen. Um, so in terms of metrics, um, so uh, what David and I have been doing is uh, looking at the community metrics, uh, particularly over the past three years. Uh, the reason why we focus on data from 2016 is um, I believe we introduced uh, or added a label called community contribution uh, sometime back in 2015. So uh, we've been focusing a lot on issues and MRs that have that community contribution label. Um, so, uh, you know, so we've been focusing on uh, data from 2016 onwards. Uh, we've obviously had uh, contributions from the wider community from uh, from before 2016, but since the label wasn't created until uh, shortly before 2016, we're, we'll mostly talk about um, metrics over the last three years. Uh, but if you look at the chart on the upper right, um, in terms of number of people that have had their MRs merge uh, over the three-year period, it's been pretty impressive growth over I mean, 200% growth between 2016 to 2018. Uh, we had almost like 500 people or contributors that have had their MRs merge uh, across pretty much all of our projects. It's not just uh, CE and EE at GitLab. It's it's things like Gitter, uh, Shell, uh, Charts, uh, uh, GitLab Development Kit. Uh, so all pretty much all projects that we have, we've had uh, uh, wider community members contributing. And the growth is even more impressive if you look at the just the number of MRs that have emerged between 2016 and 2018. We, I mean, basically more than, um, I mean, over 500% growth in terms of MRs that have emerged. Um, so, I mean, this is what makes I mean, GitLab as a product and community great. I mean, it's not just people that like a GitLab team members that are that are contributing, but you know, we definitely appreciate not only the quantity of work that's coming in from the wider community, but different uh, perspective, especially as, as user that, that all of you provide. Uh, and the other number that we have there, the, I mean, in 2018, the average contributions per month uh, in terms of MR for each release is about like 150, uh, which is a I mean, pretty, pheno pretty phenomenal number. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think we mean what we say when we say everyone can contribute. Uh, so everyone has been contributing from the wider community and we definitely want to see this going. Um, David, did you have anything you want to add here or? 
No, I think that's, that's just uh, just fantastic. I mean, I think um, quite a lot of the contributions that uh, that we've uh, that we've had. Uh, have helped us as well um, improve how we handle those um, those merge requests and how we are more, most uh, most effective in in terms of um, being more responsive um, and um, and also being reducing our cycle time in um, in making sure that we get those uh, those contributions merged um, and um, I think um, one of the things that we looked at uh, a few months ago was uh, yeah improving the GitLab bot so that there's more automation um, that helped us uh, humans <laughs> reply to those uh, MRs. And um, one thing that I would like to highlight, and uh, you might have this later in this uh, in the slide, is the work of the of the MR coaches. Um, this is a team at uh, GitLab uh, that uh, essentially is the front line. Um, is the first uh, set of people that uh, that community whether community members see and they try to help them um, getting their uh, their um, merge request in, um, be it with uh, with the first review, with uh, assigning reviewers, or answering questions. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, I think this uh, this is an important part of uh, of what we do as well, um, having um, this human interaction as well with uh, with first time contributors and uh, and um, contributors in general. Cool. Okay, uh, we'll just move right along. Uh, so, where do people uh, contribute? Um, I mean, it, you know, open source projects people uh, typically think of are, are focused mostly on code, uh, but we have several uh, different areas where people have been contributing and where people can contribute. So, let me uh, go back to the regular. Uh, view and get out of the presentation mode. So, I mean, to get started, uh, the first place you can uh, you can visit is this uh, contribute page that we have. Um, so, I mean, this is in the process of being redesigned. We realize that this is the page has gotten a little long, so we have an issue to help improve this page uh, to make it more digestible and make it more graphic. Uh, but uh, I mean, after introduction, we added a, uh, we elevated the getting help section, uh, which I'll cover in a minute, but we want to make it easy for people to get help. And we have four different areas where people have been contributing, like it's uh, traditional code development, uh, documentation, uh, translation, and UX design, and which I'll go over in a minute. But if you're just getting started, this might be a page that, that you want to come and visit. And, and like I noted, you'll probably see some improvements that we're going to make in the next few weeks. Um, so going back to the slides, uh, so I'll cover these four areas in, a, in an opposite order. Um, uh, since like a UX design, it's, it's sort of at the bottom of the page because uh, we listed these areas alphabetically. Uh, but we'll go from the bottom of the page uh, up to the top. Um, so the first area is, I mean, UX design. Um, so this is an area we've seen contributions from community. Uh, I mean, basically, I mean, people have suggesting like a different color palettes uh, as an example. So that obviously doesn't necessarily uh, require uh, you to have like in-depth knowledge of Ruby or Golang or other languages that you, we use for development. Um, and so you find the list of issues that UX team had like a maintains. Uh, the query is taking a little long, apologize. Um, I mean, but we have over like thousand issues where people have open issues where we're accepting like merge requests from the community. So if there are, if you're interested in in, in UX uh, and if you want to look at issues that you can start contributing to, I mean, here are a list of over thousand issues that you can look at. But uh, you can obviously narrow this down further. I'm gonna add a way to one uh, to find the easier uh, one of the easier. Um, uh, issues that, that people can work on. So that narrows the issue down to like three from over a thousand. Uh, so if you're interested in contributing to the UX and if you're looking for uh, a level of difficulty that is the lowest, uh, way to one, I mean, here's one way to look at the, uh, look at the query and look for issues that you can contribute to. Uh, and the other area that I wanted to, other page that I wanted to show was, um, uh, design system page. I mean, this is uh, where you find all the resources and like a design guides and philosophy behind GitLab. Uh, so if you would go there, I'm um, just going to give you a quick overview. Um, so even things like 
uh, like our logo, uh, like our colors and, and, and topography, like how uh, our philosophy behind it. Uh, you can look through these pages to get more background and same, uh, same thing on our products, like color palette. I mean, like like I mentioned, somebody, uh, one of the community members suggested uh, tweaking uh, uh, the color palette in one of the pages. I mean, this is uh, this is where you get the background information for our product and and our brand on the website, for example. Uh, and I might be going a little quick, but. I uh, wanted to highlight another page down here. So if you scroll down to like get started under contribute. Uh, so this has like a detailed steps on how uh, community members can contribute to, to UX design and proposals. I mean, by I mean, obviously filing an issue to an issue tracker and how to find like a UX reviewer or a maintainer if you need to ping somebody. Um, so if you click on a review or maintainer page here, it, list all the maintainers and reviewers that you might want to ping if you have any questions or on or or help getting started um, and the other thing I wanted to highlight for the UX um, yeah so at the bottom of the page it's basically detailed steps on how to contribute a merge request if you find an issue that you want to work on um, I mean uh, basically details out what you need to do step by step, like forking the project, uh, making changes, and you know, again, pinging the right reviewer or maintainer. Um, so, uh, I mean, if you want to get started on, if your passion is uh, user interface and UX design, I encourage you to get, uh, uh, you know, spend some time on this page. I think it's got the name pajamas because uh, it basically says, we want to make it comfortable for everyone to contribute. So it's got a cute name. Uh, so do spend some time on this page uh, if you're interested in UX design. And I mean, this is like, again, this is an area where, I mean, if, if this is your passion and then you, you don't necessarily uh, feel comfortable with Ruby and other programming languages we use, I mean, this is a good area for, for people to get started. And we also have a tutorial video. I believe this was from the first hackathon um that was done like a few quarters ago uh, i mean feel free to spend some time like watching through video to get more background on on the ux design uh, the next area is uh translation um so uh i mean this is a uh so let me go to our crowd and platform where the translation is managed um, but I mean, one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that I mean, GitLab is translated in many languages, and this is done mostly by community members. Uh, there are some GitLab team members that have been helping here and there, but this is driven mostly by community members, which I, you know, I've been very impressed with. Uh, so if you want to check out the uh, crowd and platform, just uh, go to translate.gitlab.com, uh, and shows you. Uh, you know, how uh, the progress that's being made in various languages. Uh, if you look at languages like, you know, simplified Chinese, it's like pretty much 100% translated. Uh, whereas like some of the other languages like Albanian and Arabic are just, uh, just getting started. But we're happy to see all the community members from different parts of the world uh, contributing. You'll see a whole list of them. Uh, and when I counted last time, I mean, there are about like a 15 to 17 languages that were more than like 50% like a translated, uh, which has been, which is pretty impressive. Um, so just to give you a quick tour of the crowd and platform, I mean, if you, um, I mean, I've been contributing to like a Korean translation as an example, so I'll just go there. Uh, so if you want to look at what strings need to be translated, just go to click on this file, uh, .pot file, uh, and it'll show you a list of strings uh, that are sort of highlighted in red on the left that needs to be translated. Um, so I'll just click on like one of those strings as an example. Uh, and it also gives you like suggestions uh, for translations based on like a Google Translate and other translation tools. Uh, you can click on any of these if you're happy with them or just enter your translations directly here. Um, so, I mean, if you speak a different language and if you are looking for ways to contribute, uh, I mean, translation is another good way of, of doing this. So I encourage you to check this out. And uh, 
there are also a couple of other reference materials. Uh, another tutorial video that was done by one of our core team members, Hannes, uh, a couple of hackathons ago on, on uh, translation. And I also posted a blog post, uh, I believe it was uh, back in January, on, uh, I mean, some of the things I already covered, uh, how, you know, you can basically set different preferences on your profile page to see GitLab in another language, and, you know, how translation has been done on, on the crowd and platform. So I encourage you to check that out. It should be a quick uh, five minute read. Uh, so let me pause here before I go into the next slide uh, to see if there are any questions or anything else I may have missed. If not, I can just move on. Um, all right, and the next one is uh, documentation. Um, so again, if you uh, don't have a lot of I mean, programming experience, but you still wanna uh, uh, um, learn how the process works in terms of like submitting an MR and, and getting the MR merge, uh, I mean, documentation would be one gr great way of, of doing this. And uh, I mean, a lot of times if you find, uh, I mean, not surprisingly, you'll typically find like a spelling and, and grammar mistakes that, that you want to fix. And this is usually a good way for a lot of new contributors to sort of get started to submit MR uh, with the fix. Uh, and I'm going to show this page as an example. So. Uh, whether it's docs or a web page, uh, what you'll see at the bottom of the page is edit this page link. Uh, and you can also open in a web IDE. Uh, if you happen to find um, uh, a simple typo or a simple fix that you want to do, the easy thing to do is just click on like edit this page link. Uh, it'll basically show you, I mean, where the file is located, file in question is located. Uh, so obviously you probably want to create your own fork uh, before you start working on this, but um, uh, at least you'll know uh, the path of the file, the, where the file is located, so you can start editing uh, the file and submit a quick merge request. Um, so we want to make this like a pretty simple to do, uh, whether it's a website or even, let me go to a, like a docs page uh, to illustrate this. Uh, Yeah, so this is sort of a, I mean, I just picked the documentation page at random, but at the bottom of this, you'll also see like edit this page link. Um, so documentation or website, if you wanna do a quick MR uh, and, and get uh, get familiar with the process, I mean, documentation is a, is a great way of doing this. Uh, cool. And uh, last but not least on, on contributing code or development, uh, if you're contributing or making code changes, I, you know, we strongly encourage you to uh, get started uh, with the GitLab development kit. And this basically takes you to, I believe, the README file. Uh, if you don't have a GDK installed on your laptop, I mean, this gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to prepare your computer, uh, set up GDK. I mean, basically GDK, it, it gives you the whole development environment on your, on your laptop or computer system that you use. Um, so uh, once you get this up and running, I mean, when I uh, when we polled a lot of the first time contributors, uh, I think more than half of them said that they were able to get this up and running in a couple of hours. Um, so it's, it's hopefully it's relatively um, uh, pain free. Uh, you know, once you get up and running, uh, you know, you, it, it should probably it should definitely ease your development effort. Uh, that, that you need to do. Uh, and there's also an excellent uh, tutorial video uh, that featured Tone uh, from the GDK team. Uh, probably, I believe it was in the first hackathon. Uh, it's probably one of, the, one of the most watched like a tutorial videos. Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at that um, uh, if you need more help on getting uh, GDK set up and, and using GDK. Uh, just a couple of points that I want to highlight uh, that I mean, this often comes up. If you're making a feature change that impacts uh, like users in particular, uh, you'll probably get a, a, a request from, from the review or merge request coach to also update the documentation. So um, there's something to keep in mind. 
Uh, if you want to learn more about like development guidelines, I have a link here that, that you can look at uh, later on. So let me stop there as well. Uh, David, did I miss anything or, uh, on those four areas where people can contribute? Or? No, I think that was that was uh, that was really good. Um, the only thing to to mention on the GDK itself is that um, it is um, it is not a tool. Um, um, it is a tool that uh, that's used by everyone who's developing at GitLab. There's no difference uh, whether you're developing you're developing GitLab uh, on your spare time or as uh, as part of the uh, working for your company um, or uh, working for the for the GitLab team. Um, this is something that uh, well, the GDK is something that every developer uses. Uh, so expect it to be um, up to date. And if there are issues, um, then they're generally um, noticed quite quite quickly by the um, GitLab developers. Yep. Cool. Thank you. All right. So moving on, a couple more slides. So once you get started, uh, whether it's like a UX design, documentation, or or code, or 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 anything else. Uh, I mean, first place that, that you can get help at, probably the easiest place is the uh, contributors uh, Gitter room. Uh, so I'm opening it here. And uh, yeah, over the next, uh, uh, I mean, 20 or 30 minutes or so, it looks like there are a lot of uh, questions and answers going back and forth. There are over like a 230 people that are on the channel. Um, so if you have any questions, I mean, this is probably a, a good place where not just GitLab team members, but other community members can, can help each other. So uh, if you have any questions or if you get stuck on something, uh, I mean, feel free to um, post questions here and, and ask for help or ask your questions. Uh, and the couple of other uh, area, like areas that I want to mention, and uh, David's already mentioned this early on. I mean, first is a merge request coach. Uh, so these are uh, GitLab team members. Um, basically, they volunteer to help out wider community members with their mer with any of the merge requests that, that are coming in. Uh, so if you have any questions or if you want to escalate something, I mean, you can um, mention the merge request coaches by typing in this uh, string uh, in a comment for your uh, uh, for your merge request or even an issue. Uh, so they'll, this will get their attention. And then if you want to uh, see who the, uh, the, uh, the core team members are, uh, go to the company team page. And under filter by department, uh, you can just select the merge request coaches. And you'll see the list of eight of them here. Uh, and also list their areas of expertise and uh, what they are reviewers for and what they work on. Uh, so if you want to uh, specifically like call out somebody uh, among the merge request coaches, this is a good page to go to to find out who could who can help you out. Uh, but like I said, I mean it's it's completely appropriate to just uh, ping everybody if you're not sure who who you need to ping among some merge request coaches. Um, so feel free to ping them on your MRs. And if you want to learn more about uh, merge request coaches, we also have a tutorial that was done by Clement, who was a merge request coach at the time. Uh, so it's a quick, like a 15 minute video that you can check out at your leisure. Uh, and the other thing that I want to point out, uh, if you want to find out who the reviewers or maintainers for, for different GitLab projects are, uh, feel free to go to this link and you'll get a whole list of uh, like reviewers and maintainers that you can ping. And I mean, this is something that, you know, both David and I are, I mean, try to stress to everybody uh, new in the community. It's completely appropriate to ping anybody within GitLab if you have any questions about your contributions uh, and merge requests. So don't feel shy about like mentioning any of these people uh, in your merge request. Uh, if you have any questions or if you don't feel like things are um, uh, getting reviewed in a timely manner. Um, and so uh, just want to emphasize that. And then if you have any other like uh, questions or feedback uh, that you don't think are it can be covered by merge request coaches or reviewers, uh, feel free to send an email to this contributor's alias. And uh, uh, both David and, and I are on this alias, so we'll, uh, we'll uh, get back to you as soon as we can uh, when you send an email. 
Okay, and the last topic here. Um, uh, the other uh, the common question I get from community members is, you know, how do I find issues to to start working on? Uh, so, I mean, one of the easiest way to find issues is to just do a query uh, and look for a label accepting marriage requests and has a backlog milestone. So here's an example uh, that I'll quickly show. Um, and this also has a, we also added a weight of one. Uh, so the level of difficulty is the lowest. Uh, so right now there are about, uh, there are 16 issues under, uh, under for like, a, this is an example for CE um, uh, that are accepting merge requests. And then the, the milestone of backlog, I mean, what this means is that I mean, various product team members, I mean, this, this is the way for them to mark these as something they want to see, but they just don't have like a specific milestone assigned to. Um, so it's, there's a higher likelihood that you'll, uh, you'll get the attention of like a product manager, for example, if you want to start working on any of these issues. Uh, so look at these issues and, and feel free to just mention me or David and say, and just let us know that you're, st you're interested in working on them. So we'll make sure that these issues get assigned to you. Um, um, and so you can you know, start working on your, on your MR and the, other thing I want to quickly show, I mean, you can obviously further uh, refine your query. Um, whoops. So for example, if you're just interested in like a documentation under CE, for example, uh, you can further narrow down the query and uh, see, oh, for some reason, oh, there we go. I guess there's only one issue um, uh, that meets the, the criteria, but this is way for you to further narrow down the query. Uh, to see if there are issues that, are, that you might be interested in working on. Um, so, uh, but you know, it, as this last bullet item says, even if you don't have an issue, if, even if there, there isn't an issue that are, that are created right now, but if you, I mean, feel free to create any other issues and uh, I mean, don't feel like you need to be encumbered by whether the issue is open or not. Uh, even if there isn't an issue, we've had a number of uh, co contributors just start either creating a new issue or just creating an MR to get started, and that's completely appropriate. So I think I may have uh, rushed through the last couple of slides because I'm looking at the time. Uh, in the three minutes left, uh, there are any questions or, David, any comments that you want to add here? I feel like I sort of rushed through the last couple of slides. But. No, I think you've covered it um, pretty well. Um, I don't have anything else to add. Cool. Okay, just checking the chat here, make sure there are no questions. Uh, yeah, even after the call or, or for people that are uh, on the, uh, you know, watching the recording, if you have any questions, I mean, feel free to post them on the, on the Gitter channel. Uh, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as, as soon as we can. Uh, and just, I mean, let us know if you have any, you know, questions about finding issues to work on or, you know, how to get in touch with, uh, you know, various people like GitLab, if you have any questions about your, your merge request. Cool. I guess uh, we'll just uh, end the call here, and we have another tutorial starting in, in about two minutes, so I'll uh, see me, some of you there. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Dave.